it's Christmas Eve and Merry Christmas to all of you. I will not be making a video on Christmas Day as we'll have family with us and I'm not going to take time away from them since we get to see them so seldom. We'll pick back up again on Saturday. Spiritual gifts. Yeah, there's a lot of things under the Christmas tree probably at your house. There's a few things at our house. Uh, but the best gift that you ever received was salvation through Jesus Christ. The second best gift you ever received was your spiritual gift. The gift that God gave to you when you received him as your Savior and as your Lord. And we've just started to look at uh, what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 12, 1. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. Verse 4 says there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are a variety of ministries, the same Lord. A variety of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. So let's take a look at that. A variety of gifts. Well, there's almost 27 uh, gifts that uh, you could list. And there's a variety of ministries for each of those gifts. Uh, that is, the, they're not all the same ministries that you would do with that gift. And the variety of effects, there's, uh, the outcome of using those gifts is different. And so let's take a look at uh, these in kind of groupings that make sense. Uh, the first four that I want us to look at is prophecy, pastoring, evangelist, and teacher. And the reason I've grouped those four together is because they are perfect if they're all four in one person. It uh, doesn't happen very often, but occasionally you find a person who's been gifted in prophecy, pastoring, being an evangelist, and a teacher. Uh, so let's talk about what they mean. Prophecy means the special gift that God gives to a person that enables them to bring messages of God to his people. Uh, that is, to be able to communicate those messages clearly. It does not mean what we would say prophets did, where they foretold the future, but this is rather the ability to communicate messages of God to his people. You'll find it in 1 Corinthians 12:10, 12, 12:28, Ephesians 4:11 through 14, uh, Romans 12:6, Luke 7:26, Acts 15:32, Acts 21:9 through 11. Most of the apostles had that ability to communicate messages, and Paul certainly was one that was an expert at communicating messages from God. Peter. Uh, another good example from scripture. The second one is pastor. Uh, pastor is different than being an evangelist. Uh, although some pastors are evangelistic and have the gift of evangelism. A pastor is a person that has a long-term personal responsibility for the spiritual welfare of a group of people. A pastor loves his people. He's like a shepherd watching over sheep. And a pastor enters into that relationship hopefully on a long-term basis with the responsibility of your spiritual welfare and I hope that you're thanking God for your pastor today uh, because he is especially gifted for that role by God you'll find it in 1st Timothy 3 1 through 7 John 10 1 through 18 and 1st Peter 5 1 through 3 uh, we see the early apostles being pastors, uh, shepherding a flock, uh, and it's it's not to be a preacher per se, uh, although many pastors are good preachers, their main role is a long-term personal responsibility, loving, caring for, and helping spiritually a group of people or a flock of God's people. Evangelist. They share the gospel with unbelievers, with unbelievers, in a way such that they believe and become disciples. Uh, Billy Graham was an excellent example of an evangelist. There are many fine evangelists in America today. One of my favorites is Clyde Childs, and uh, he and Ron Dunn and uh, many others have really made an impact on my life, but. But more than that, they've made an impact on a lot of unbelievers in such a way that they became believers and disciples of Jesus Christ. You'll find that in 2 Timothy 4, 5, 
Acts chapter 8 verses 26 through 40, Acts 14, 21, and Acts 21 verse 8. Uh, one of the best examples that I can say is I knew a man who had an uncanny ability to take and preach to a congregation. There may have only been 10 lost people in the congregation, but when he preached, those 10 made decisions. He had an uncanny ability to get unbelievers to see that they needed to be believers and become disciples. The tragedy about this man that I knew uh, is that he wanted to pastor instead of being an evangelist. Yet his gift was in evangelism. That was his expertise. And as a pastor, he wasn't really good. Uh, he didn't really have that personal relationship with the sheep like a pastor needs to have. Tragic that he never really fully uh, exploited his evangelistic gift and rather tried to pastor. Uh, when a pastor has the gift of prophecy, pastoring and evangelism, it's a wonderful thing. But here's the fourth one that I want to share with you. And if a pastor has all four of these, hang on to them because they're rare and few between. A teacher who communicates information in such a way as the members will understand, learn, and grow in their faith and trust of Jesus Christ. You'll find that in 1 Corinthians 12:28. You'll find it in Romans 12, 7, Acts 18, 24 through 28, and Acts 20, verses 20 and 21. So if you have a pastor who has an uncanny ability to communicate a message from God uh, and to his people, a pastor who has a long-term loving relationship with the sheep and the welfare of the group, an evangelistic pastor who has an ability to bring unbelievers to believing, and that he's a great teacher, that is, he's a great communicator in such a way that members understand and grow in their faith and trust. You are blessed because very few pastors have all of those abilities and very few evangelists have all four of those abilities. And uh, all four uh, are individual spiritual gifts, but occasionally you find a pastor uh, an evangelist who has this ability uh, for all four of these spiritual gifts. They complement one another. You didn't necessarily just receive one gift. You may have received many. And when they're combined together, they can be an incredible a dynamo, if you will. And they make uh, that particular person really stand out. But whether your pastor has all of these gifts, one of these gifts, uh, it doesn't matter. Thank God for him. God placed him in charge of the flock where you are. And give thanks this Christmas season for your pastor. And give thanks for the evangelists and the teachers and the prophecy people who have that special gift that help you to grow as a Christian. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.